Hey guys, we are back with some more Vegas Golden Knights Eastside Hockey Manager. And in this one, as you can see, we're going to be making a trade with the San Jose Sharks for Adam Larson. So we're kind of weak at right defense because we obviously traded away Nick Hogg, but he wasn't, I don't even think he was a right defenseman. He was a left-handed defenseman, or at least he was on the uh, left side. I don't know if he was left-handed, but... In terms of our righties on defense, we have Eric Brandstrom and Colin Miller. After that, no, nothing. <laughs> Corsi's a lefty, York's a lefty, Theodore's a lefty, Cruz's a lefty. So we really are pretty thin at right D. And Corsi didn't really get the chance to play. I mean, he got a lot of games. He just didn't impress me too much. And he's already 22. And I don't really like his mental category. And then the other guy who we're adding to this trade would be Kenneth Torma. He's already 23. He's looking pretty solid for a defensive center, but uh, I don't think he's going to get the opportunity on this team because we already have guys like, for example, Lucas Summers. He's a pretty good defensive center himself. He's 23. I like his stats a little bit better than Torma. So we're going to be offering T Corsi and Torma. To the Sharks for Adam Larson and a third. I don't mind if they don't want to give us the third, but I do want Adam Larson out of this deal. And when you take a look at free, the main reason I'm making a trade now, as opposed to waiting to free agency to see what there is, is because there's really nothing in free agency as I can't go to free agents as I must have. Uh, you know what? I'm just going to offer the trade right here just so I don't screw anything up. <laughs> but if we go into free agents here, you could see that there is no really good defensemen that are in free agency. So if we sort by defensemen here and expiring UFAs, and it, these are just guys who haven't been signed yet. Like half of these guys may actually end up signing with their teams and they won't even be available in free agency. All the top defenders are left defensemen and then the top right hand defensemen or at least the top uh, right defensemen is Steven Santini. <laughs> so, that's not really ideal for me. Uh, if I'm getting someone out of free agency, I want it to be a very big upgrade. And I'm not seeing that out of these free agencies, so that's why we are trying to trade for Adam Larson here. And we, obviously, we already sent the trade to the San Jose Sharks, and we have to wait for them to accept. So, we will simulate a couple of days here to see if they accept. And if not, then we are going to have to modify the offer because I really do want to get my hands on Adam Larson. And actually, <laughs> I probably should have showed you guys this a little earlier, but I'm going to show you guys Adam Larson's contract. So this year, right here, this first year already happened. This is uh, this past year. So this is actually a five-year contract as opposed to a six-year contract as how it looks, but it's actually starting with this year. So this year, he would be, he's 29 right now, his birthday is November 12th, so he would be 30 within this year, then 31 this year, 32, 33, 34. So this is a very good contract for Larson, he uh, will be 34 by the time it's over, and defensemen in this game do not regress as fast as they do in uh, EA Sports. And he's actually a pretty good simulator. He's had a couple of seven years with the Oilers. And he didn't play too well with the Sharks. But he only had 27 games. So I'm guessing he was injured for the majority of this past year. So as we take a look at injuries. Well, actually, not really. He only had one injury. Or no, no, no. Two injuries this past year. From the fractured jaw and the arm contusion. But other than that, I guess he was just scratched for... The Sharks, so I guess it would make sense as to why they would want to trade him. But as we take a look at his playing career and go to the playoffs, he was a very solid simulator in the playoffs for them last year. In seven games played, he had a 729 average rating, and we really need some stability on the back end. So that is why we are trading for Adam Larson, and the trade is taking place. So Todd Corsi and Kenneth Torma to the Sharks for Adam Larson and a third Trade it, accepted, and confirmed. So that is how do you trade for Adam Larson, Peter Shirelli. <laughs> that is how you trade for Adam Larson. All right, so let's see. 
is the board going to be mad? The board is going to be mad. All right. So I kind of figured that because it, it's just how this game works. But I still think that was a good trade. Let me know what you guys thought of it. And Adam Larson is officially a Vegas Gold Knight. So we are going to not place him on waivers. We are going to assign him as a core player. And then we will give him a number. Uh, both five and six are taken. Those are his, both of his previous numbers, though. I believe he... Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe he wore four at some point in his career. So I will give Adam Larson number four. Welcome to Vegas, Adam Larson. And so that'll be just about it. That Honestly, that's... The main offseason move that we're going to be making here. So now we have Krug and Larson, and then York and Brandstrom, and then Theodore and Miller. I'll probably put Brandstrom with Theodore. But other than that, that's really, that's looking solid. That's looking like a solid defensive core, if I do say so myself. And then obviously with goaltenders, we're going to be signing, not now, but on July 1st, we're going to be signing Joachim Gerton, who was our first round pick, uh, five-star goaltender. Five-star potential goaltender. And we are going to be releasing Louis Domingue, or, well, I guess in this case, trading, because his contract doesn't expire till next year. But again, then again, like, it couldn't hurt to keep Louis Domingue for one more year just in case Gerton struggles. So I guess we won't trade him, but still, I want to give Gerton the best chance possible to make the NHL roster. And, yeah, that's basically going to be it. So we're going to sim ahead to the awards... And then after that, we'll go to July 1st just to see if there's anything we kind of need. But I don't know. I really like this roster as it is. Last year was just a little bit unfortunate, if in my opinion, you know, getting out in the third round. We were close. So I want to give this roster another chance, especially since we're getting older, you know. All of our young guys have had playoff experience at this point. So I really want to give this roster the best chance possible. And... Honestly, we have a very good team. We really do. We have Reimer, who's a pretty solid goaltender for us all last year. And then we have Gerton coming in as a rookie goaltender. Then you have Krug, who's been absolutely phenomenal for us ever since he's arrived. And then Larson, who we've just picked up, who should be solid for us. Colin Miller, who had an off year last year, but other than that, has been very solid for us. Shea Theodore, been solid ever since day one. Eric Brandstrom been solid ever since he cracked the NHL roster, and Cam York has really thrived in the past year and a half or so. So there's really not much reason to break anything up here. And then, of course, you got Joe Valeno, Mr. Point Record himself for the Vegas Golden Knights, 90 points last year. And then Carl Forrest, Mr. 57 goals in the AHL in 64 games. And then Artemi Panarin, uh, Riley Smith, who scored 46 goals last year, it's just, there's no point in me making a splash just for the heck of it, because the, the key to any winning team is consistency, and that's what we have going for us here. So I really do not feel like breaking this team up unless, you know, something completely, uh, something happens that it was completely unexpected. I, there's no reason to make a huge shakeup. Our, our, our shakeup for this offseason was getting out of Larson. That's basically about it. <laughs> so we're going to see what happens here in free agency and in the awards here in one more day. But other than that, again, I, I don't see too many weaknesses in this team is my point. So we're going to see the awards here, and then we will move on. So the Art Ross goes to Mark Shifley. The Maurice Richard goes to Anders Lee. How many goals did Anders Lee score? 49. Okay, so I thought for sure that, yeah, Smith was second in runner-up for the Maurice Richard trophy. And then the Lester B. Pearson goes to Alex Galchenyuk. The Norris goes to Eric Carlson. Vesna goes to Hope East. Jennings goes to Hope East. Saving Grace goes to Hope East. <laughs> Selkie goes to Reiko Polkinen, the Selkie Trophy winner. Reiko Polkinen, what a draft pick. He wins the Selkie. <laughs> he is that he is a second year player. He was a second year player last year. Winning the Selkie Trophy. 
Selkie Polkinen. What a beast. What an absolute beast. Calder goes to Tyler Weiss of the Red Wings. Bing goes to Sam Reinhart. King Clancy goes to Jamie Benn. Lester Patrick goes to Claude Giroux. Jack Adams goes to Keith Acton of the Predators. Plus minus goes to Ryan Suter. Hart Memorial goes to Jamie Benn. Con Smythe goes to Ellie Tolvanen. Bill Masterton goes to Brad Marchand. Jeez. Uh, second All-Star team. Tory Krug has been selected. Very nice. And a trade proposal between the Oilers and Golden Knights. Let's see. Milan Lucic and Dylan Momquist. The rights to Gustav Olofsson. A third and a fourth for Reiko. Are you crazy? Are you absolutely crazy, Edmonton? He just won the Selkie Trophy. No, thank you. <laughs> Not taking Milan Lucic for Reiko Polkinen. Jeez. <laughs> Peter Shirelli over here thinking he can get <laughs> he can get uh, Reiko Polkinen for all the, for all those assets just because I got Adam Larson for more than what he got him for. You know the. the I don't know what he was thinking there, but <laughs> that's definitely not happening. Not anytime soon. All right, so Vegas Golden Knights Player of the Year decided, and that would be our Tammy Panarin. 88 points this season, scoring 36 goals and 52 assists. Shareholders, and then highest average attendance than ever before at Vegas Golden Knights. Very nice. Tag Grady set for new home, Okay. As we get to July 1st now, should be interesting. So let's see what happens here. Uh, obviously, guys that we didn't re-sign are going to be released. And that would be the likes of William Carrier and who was it? Who else? Zach Hyman. Right, 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 right. So everyone else has been re-signed by us. Golden Knights. Given $10 million as usual, board looks forward to playoffs. So the board has finally has some bigger expectations for us. As <laughs> I believe this is the first year that they've said they want us to make the playoffs. So, hey, you, you know, we're getting somewhere <laughs> in terms of proving people wrong. And then let's see, let's see. Personnel, I think we're fine with these guys. So let's check free agency just to see what's there. But again, I really don't think... We're going to be making too much of a splash. I mean, there's Geno Malkin, there's Couturier, there's Zabanajad, there's Nick Letty, Kadri. We don't really need any of these guys, to be honest. Uh, oh, we're actually over the cl average club salary now. Ooh, don't like that. So we might have to do something here. And that would probably be to trade Louis Domingue. <laughs> so let's see if we can... Yeah, we're definitely going to be able to get some here for him. So, a second and a third, a second. So, I will cancel that immediately. A third and a fourth cancel. A first from the Avalanche. I'll keep that on the board. A second and a fourth, a second and a third. I'll cancel that. Kings, third and a third, cancel. Second, cancel. Second and a third from the Preds. I'll leave that on the board. Rangers, third and a fourth, no thank you. Flyers, third and a fourth, no thank you. Penguins, third and a fourth, nope. Anything that's less than the Preds, Avalanche, or Bruins have been offering, just going to decline right away. Lightning, yeah, that's a pretty good offer. It's the same offer as those other couple of teams that have offered. So, between the Lightning, Predators, Avalanche, and Bruins. I prefer not to trade to the Western Conference, but then again, it's only Louis Domingue. So, let's see. Do I want one first from the Avalanche, who, well, we don't know where they were at last year. But I would imagine they were pretty good. Or do we want a second and a third from the Bruins, the Predators, or the Lightning? Now, the, it's worth noting that the Bruins have offered a third-round pick for the year after this next draft. And the Predators and the Lightning have both offered third-round picks for this upcoming draft as opposed to next one. So when it comes down to it, uh, I think I'll just accept all of these and... Okay, so all of them are taking place. I just wanted to make sure because sometimes, sometimes even if you accept an offer that was sent, the computer will still, the computer may end up changing its mind and say, you know what, that's not a good deal. I'm gonna cancel this trade. So, but no, all of them are taking place. So it's a matter of which one do I like the best. And 
I think that's got to be the lightning, honestly, because I I don't know where the Avalanche are going to end up. And I'm going to guess that they're going to be pretty good. They have Semyon Varlamov. They have Vlasic. They have Glaniskog. They have McKinnon. So I wouldn't say they are in the top 20 <laughs> in terms of first round picks. But if we take a second and a third, then you get two picks. And the draft in this game being pretty deep and anything can happen, uh, that honestly might be the smarter idea for Louis Domingue. So I'm going to trade with the Lightning here as I don't want to trade with the Predators as a Western Conference team. So we're going to be sending Louis Domingue to the Lightning. There you go. Trade confirmed. And now, oh my, how did our average club salary go up? <laughs> I have no idea how that happened. Uh, huh. Okay. Huh. That's amusing. And by amusing, I mean confusing. <laughs> Let's see what we can do here. All right, so we're clearly not going to be making any free agent signings with this average club side the way it is. We're 3.5 over at the moment, so we can't do any signings at all for players, and there's no staff that we need to sign. So really, I'm just going to go ahead to the preseason because, again, there's nothing we can do here. And if the salary is still like that come preseason, then we're going to have to make a trade. So I will see you guys in one second. All right. So we are at the beginning of year number six, I think. I can never keep track. Anyway, we are at the start of this year and we're still three million above the average club salary. So we're obviously going to have to make a trade here. As to who that's going to be, I honestly don't know. Uh, but one thing we do have to do regardless is sign a goaltender, and that would be, for us, Joachim Gerton, our past first overall, or uh, first round draft pick. So we are going to approach to sign him as a hot prospect. There you go. And uh, we may as well take a look at our other pro prospects here while we are at it. Makinen, uh, Yavanec, okay. So Ekstrom, Anelov, he's actually not looking too bad. Crookshank. Thompson, Stanfley, mm, I'll just stall, Campoli, Raffle. All right, so I'll just look at the good reputation guys then. Monaghan, not looking too bad. Judd Caulfield, Antonio Strange, is that? He's, he's, he's looking better. Definitely looking better. Alexis Martin, we just drafted him. Eric Soderlund, Zaharachuk, we just drafted as well. Okay, so not too many other rookies that I want to sign other than the goaltender. So, for right now, we will call up Dylan Ferguson, and then, oh, nope, uh, we'll dress him, and as far as defenseman goes, Colin Miller's injured with a groin strain, all right, he'll be back before any of the preseason games start anyway, so I'm not going to bother putting him on the injured reserve. So, the, here's our defensive core to start the year, and then, as for forwards, Panarin, Silverberg, Valeno, Marcia So, Polkin, and Polkin, and Smith. Carlson, Lazaro, Lapalainen, Fors, and Larson. Now, one of these guys is probably going to have to go. It's not going to be Smith because he's obviously coming off a 46-goal season, and I don't want to trade that away, <laughs> especially not right after he had the best season of his career. And then Valeno is obviously, for us, untouchable. 90 points. I mean, you can't replace that. Silverberg has been fantastic. 69 points last year and a 7.66 average rating. And then Panarin, obviously, is Artemi Panarin. 76 points, 782 average rating. Not about to trade any of those guys away. But a guy who I was thinking about was William Carlson. He... He's a good second line center, but he only had a 704 last year for his average rating. And we have other centers coming up like Carl Fors, Alan Lazaro, and then other prospect centers like Rasmus Kapari, Lucas Summers. So in the grand scheme of things, when you take a look at that average club, sorry, we're over by 3 million and William Carlson's making 3.7. So he would make the most sense to trade away. I don't want to do it because Carlson's just been a solid player for us, yeah, for this team in the past, and obviously Vegas Golden Knights fans love him. But we have too many prospect centers 
or I, I should say young centers in Carl Fors, Al Lazaro, and then all the other guys down here that are coming up and are pushing for ice time. And Carl Fors, I think, proved that he deserves an increase in ice time from last year. 39 points in his rookie year on the fourth line, nonetheless. So one of these guys has to go, and it's Carlson's the odd man out. He really is. So we're going to see what we can get from William Carlson. And I'm going to try to make a pretty good trade here. So as a result, I'm not going to do the offer out to all thing. I'm going to look for a trade. So give me one second here. Okay, so I actually did end up doing the offer trade at all thing because I just couldn't find a reasonable destination for him as for anyone who would actually want him. And we only got one offer from the Winnipeg Jets who are giving us the rights to Stanislav Damon and a third and a fourth. I don't know if I like that. I don't think I do. So let's gauge their interest. They could definitely consider this offer. However, they're not interested in acquiring... William Carlson, as he is overpaid. Overpaid, are you kidding me? He's only at 3.7. That's not too bad for William Carlson. He had 45 points last year, 59 the year before. <laughs> Proven 60-point scorer. Come on now, game. <laughs> give him a little bit of credit there. We'll give him... All right, we'll try getting him for first and a third. We don't like the sound of this offer. Are you kidding me? What about a just a first? Not sure if this offer is any good. Jeez Louise. And, I mean, the Winnipeg Jets know that we're above the cap, so they can technically, they, they have leverage on us. We could definitely consider this offer for a second. What about a second and a third? Not sure if they're, this offer is any good. All right, let's tr just try to get as much as we can, because <laughs> the board's definitely going to rip me for this. Could definitely consider this offer. Okay, what if we add another fourth? Could definitely consider this offer. <laughs> Again, got to get as much out of this as we can. The board's going to rip me. I know it. No matter no matter what we get for William Carlson, the board's probably going to rip me cause, just because of how good he is in the technical category. But again, we have to unload somebody here. So, And Carlson was the one out. Okay, so I don't think they're going to accept any more. So we'll go for a second and two fours for William Carlson. I really, I don't like this. I really don't. But again, the Jets have the upper hand on us. They have the leverage because they know that we're over the cap and they know that we had we have to trade somebody. And for us, that somebody boils down to William Carlson, unfortunately. So, offer. I really, I, I don't want to do this again, but we kind of have to. So, thank you for your service to the Vegas Golden Knights, William Carlson, but... Uh, I, I hate doing this. I, uh, I'm i going to cringe when I do this. Yep. Yep. It had to be done. It had to be done. I, I, well, at least... Uh, wow. So we're still half a million above, <laughs> above the average club salary. So we're going to have to trade somebody else here. It looks like. And I'm not... I'm not too sure as to who that's going to be. <laughs> it might have to end up being someone like Colin Miller or something. Oh, jeez, the game in this salary cap. It's it's kind of confusing because it's just the average club salary. It's not just the salary cap. It's the averaged club salary. And it gets kind of confusing, at least when it comes to the uh, seeing the amount that you have left. So, all right. So, here's where... The contract of Artemi Panarin really, really is going to start to hurt us. Still at 9.9 .9 per year for the next five years. And we are still, even after trading William Carlson, 500000 over the salary cap. So, I don't want to break apart any of the defense because we really don't have any defensive prospects down here that I would trust in the NHL yet. Semenov... He's looking good so far down there in the AHL, but he's a left-handed defenseman. And we have a little too much depth at, at the left-handed defenseman. Martin Stephenson, same thing. Jet Wu is the only right-handed defenseman we have down here. Connor Novak's a lefty. Verche's a lefty. And Jet Wu, I'm not liking his current attributes. I like his average ratings, but I'm not liking his attributes right now. So... 
it's got to be another forward that we trade away, honestly, because we have guys down here like Niels Blomqvist who could step up if needed. Nick Suzuki, even if if it comes down to it. Uh, Gabby Bishop is looking to make a push soon. Oscar Landstrom, Quinton Byfield. And then you go back up to the NHL roster. You have guys like Travis Trelore, Dwayne Kendry, Andre Kucera, Lucas Summers, Rasmus Kapari, uh, <laughs> Constantine Svetlov, Aiden Thompson. So... We have a lot more forward depth than we have defensemen, so I'd be a lot more willing to give up a forward here, and that's exactly what we're going to be doing. We're going to be trading away Jonathan Marshall. So he's again, he's the odd one out because I don't want to trade Panarin, I don't want to trade Smith, I don't want to trade Silverberg, I don't want to trade Valeno. I'm not trading Polkinen. He's been too imp <laughs> too important for this team. He's an absolute bargain for what he brings to the table. Alan Lazaro is a young guy. Reiko Polkinen just won the Selkie. Uh, while Terry Lapalain and Larson Fours don't make that much money anyway, but they're all good players as well, so I, I'm not trading them, obviously. So, and then when it comes to defense, Krug, Larson, York, Theodore, Miller, Brandstrom, all those guys are important to us. And then obviously not trading Reimer, as he is our guy in that. So, again, that leaves Marshall so as the one out. And I, I really, I don't want to do this, because, again, he's a solid 50-point guy. But then you take a look at the playoffs, and he's not that great of a simulator in the playoffs. So that is what singled Marsha so out for me. So <laughs> we're going to have to make another offer out to all lukewarm reaction. Hmm. Nobody wants Jonathan Marsha so. That's unfortunate. <laughs> he still has four years left on his contract. I really do not want to buy that out as... I kind of just want to make a trade here. So let's let's see what other teams would want in terms of wingers. So the Blackhawks want a solid left winger. The Avalanche want depth on left wing. So we can try the Avalanche. Forwards, let's see. Riley Smith, no, no, no. So why is, uh, actually, why is Riley Smith's value only at one star? That's interesting. So where is Marshall? So Marshall is right there. So what would the Avalanche want for him? Let's see. I'll, I'll put a second in there for right now. It would put them above the salary cap. So let's see what teams are looking like in the cap chart. What about Carolina? They have some cap room. Yeah, they could definitely afford Marshall. So. so let's see. No comment at the moment. We'll put a second in there. And... They have no interest in a trade like this. Uh, and that actually would put them over the cap anyway. So let's see. Is there any team that can afford Marshes? There's no team that can afford Marshes, though. <laughs> Every team is within 4.5 of the cap or less. So I don't know what to do. <laughs> I, I don't want to buy Marsha so out because he's a little too valuable to do that. But then if you try to trade him, no one wants him. So I guess maybe we wait for the regular uh, we can't wait for the regular season to start. Cause then we're not gonna be we're not gonna be able to play any games until we get a, below the salary cap. So I'm gonna stop it here. You guys let me know what we should do. I was trying to trade Marsha so but Turns out we can't do that, as just no one wants him. And the only other option for him is waivers, and I really do not want to do that. But, uh, I mean, I guess you got to do what you got to do, but you, you guys let me know. Because there's really not a whole lot of options here in terms of getting below the salary cap. I don't feel like trading away any of our defensive core. I'm not going to trade away Reimer. And in terms of forwards... You have to pick and choose, you know, between Panarin, Smith, Silverberg, Valeno, Marcia so, and then Timu Polkinen and Lazaro, because they're all the guys who are making above one million, and I really do not want to trade away any of them, but I singled out Marcia so for the reason of he doesn't really perform that well in the playoffs as far as average rating goes. But you guys gotta let me know because I have no idea what to do from here. <laughs> so Leave your suggestions down in the comments and I will see you guys in the next one.